So welcome to the assembly of rebuilders and restorers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Intercessors are rebuilders of broken walls and restorers of lives of homes. They are rebuilders of ancient ruins. Intercession is the first and is first and foremost a call to arise and build. I'm just going to be sharing with you what God has been talking to me about this whole week. And for the first time, he took me to the book of Nehemiah. I have never seen Nehemiah in that light. Was standing here on Thursday while the ministration was on. Nehemiah opened up and all I could see was intercession and kingdom advancement in Nehemiah. So we're going to be staying in Nehemiah for a while. I beseech you that as you go back home, sit down and study the book of Nehemiah. Intercession is first and foremost a call to rise and build. When you intercede for families, when you intercede for your neighborhood, when you, when you intercede for cities, for communities, for nations, what you are doing is you are building them up and you are upholding them in God. So first and foremost, intercession is a call to rise and build. Nehemiah like I said, God had took me there and showed me something in Nehemiah. In Nehemiah, just like Nehemiah, God is calling us, he's calling the church, he's calling Grace Family, he's calling this house back to the place of building, to rise and build walls around our families, around our nation, about, around our society, around our institutions, around our cities, around our environment. In, in, in Intercession is first and foremost a call to rise and build. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 61 verse 4. We'll read it together. Please let's read together. It said, they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. You are the one the scripture is talking about. You are that's there. You are the person the scripture is talking about. You, the redeemed. You, the restored. You're the one the scripture is saying will rebuild the ancient ruins. You're the one the scripture is saying will restore places long devastated. You're the one the scripture is saying will repay ruined cities. You're the one that will renew ruined places and take away the desolations of many generations. You and none other. And you're not going to be rebuilding with sticks and stones and mud like Nehemiah. Maya did, you're going to be rebuilding with prayer. You are the generation of prophecy. You are the one the prophets prophesied about. You are the one redeemed. You're the one that is restored to stand and rebuild walls around our communities, around your family. In legislation, you can legislate for yourself, but in intercession, you are called to take on external burdens. You're called to take on things outside of you. You're called to think like the God you have been made on earth. So you are the one scripture is talking about. You're the one that is authorized and committed to legislate on behalf of God here. Spiritual legislators are authoritative intercessors. Today, God asked me to announce to this house that he is calling us to rise and build. He's calling us back to the place of intercession and he's depending on us to revive cities, to revive our neighborhoods, to revive our families through intercession, to revive those foundations, those desolations that have been forgotten for many generations. When Nehemiah arrived in Jerusalem, after God had put the burden of rebuilding the walls in his heart, you know, he said to the people, you see the bad situation we are in. This is Nehemiah 2.17. He said to those people, see the bad situation, the walls of Jerusalem, is in, it lies in ruins, its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us build the world of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a disgrace. He painted the picture. They were already familiar with it. It was 140 years since that wall has been in that place. And what did they respond? They said, let us rise and build. I pray that that will be our 
decision as we walk away from church today that we'll walk away with a, a renewed commitment to pray, a renewed commitment to seek the face of God, a renewed commitment to stand in the gap. Next week, we are going to look at what it actually means to stand in the gap in intercession. So they said, let us rise and build, and together they strengthened their hands for the job. When the Bible says you are the generation that will rebuild ancient ruins, Je Nehemiah did it with a group of people. He said every man went about rebuilding a section of their own wall. They rebuilt the wall closest to their house. And as I read that, the Holy Spirit gave me the understanding that if you would take the burden closest to you, and I would take on the burden closest to me, and she would take on the burden closest to her, before you know it would have advanced, would have bested the, the kingdom in our spheres, would have bested the kingdom in our neighborhood, would have bested the kingdom in our household. Look at all of us, some of us, we all of our houses, like in one house you have five Christians, in one house you have five godly people, sometimes the entire family goes to church. Imagine if you take on one burden, and this one takes on the next one, the next man by the streets, the madman across the road, the family that people are dying and is as if there is no hope. If we would adopt them in prayer in just a little time, we will turn back history. We will change history. We will turn back time. We will rebuild old foundations. That's how we will restore ancient ruins. How did Nehemiah did it? After every man listened to him, they said, let us arise and build. And in a short time, in just 52 days because each man adopted the section closest to his house to build the other man adopted the section closest to our house to build men and women they were not builders they were not engineers when you study nehemiah you will see that you saw you will find manufacturers of perfumes you will find mayors of cities you will find businessmen you will not find anyone that the bible list was a, a builder or an engineer so the call to intercession is not the exclusive privilege of ordained ministers it's not for a reverend a priest a pastor it's for all of us kingdom citizens if you have been brought into Christ Jesus, you have been brought, you are now a partaker of that his divine assi assignment. The one thing Christ does right now for us is intercession. And in interceding, you actually partner, you collaborate with God. Today, God asked me to come and tell this house that it's time to arise and build. It's time to erect walls of fire around your schools. It's time to erect walls of fire around this nation. It's time to erect walls of fire in your neighborhood. It's time to take your eyes out of or off yourself, my need, my car, my, my this, my school fees, my that, and begin to think like God because you have been given the mind of Christ and begin to take the burdens in the heart of God and begin to burst his kingdom in your home starts from that your home starts small you can pick it and I said last week people don't need to know you you can just pick a case and stay on your knees the moment you see results it strengthens your confidence and you advance you don't need to wait until you are talking nations you can start small look around students you're in school you see someone whose script is always missing you can adopt that person in prayer and begin to speak for whatever is going on there God Last week as I stood here, he said, I've been giving you two, I've been putting tools in your toolbox so that when you engage in strategic warfare and prayer, you will know what to use. If you go back, he said you are a legislator, he said you are an executor, executor. he said you are, a, you are my battle axe. What is he doing? He's giving you, he's allowing you to come to the place of authority because you cannot intercede and have results if you are begging. You have to intercede with the understanding of your position that you are seated in Christ Jesus in the heavenly places above every dominion, above every ruler, above every principality, above every authority, above every kingdom, above every realm. If you forget everything we've ever said, go back to the Friday service that Father illustrated here and call that illustration to mind every time you feel small you are seated on the very seat that Christ sits and when you speak in prayer speak from that understanding speak from that even if you gave your life to Christ this morning it applies to you we've been called we are being called this morning to rise and build to rise and do what God does to rise and repair the breaches in our own family to not allow the enemy open access into our homes to rise as sentinels in our territories God is depending on you God is depending on me 
to revive that waste, that devastation you have seen, that de desolation, that burden, those things you see. It's not, it's not something to post about. God is depending on you to change that story, to change that family, to restore that home. If you are, you've taken on and you, and you believe this is you God is talking to, rise and let's affirm the word of God together. I'm not going to rush over today's words because... I, I prayed and I trust the Holy Spirit that you will take it home and it will become meditation points for you. Every one line of today's confession is an explosion and is, is something that can explode into books and books of understanding of your identity. That I pray that as you say these words, burdens will be given to you. You will walk away with new garments of fire. You walk away with laced with authority, laced with fire, released to pray. Say with me, I am a kingdom citizen I am a kingdom citizen I am called to be an authoritative intercessor I arise and build walls of fire around my home you can actually raise your hand my community and nation say I am endowed with authority to bind what ruins families and waste cities. I am God's system of protection against ruins and devastations. Say, I am an ambassador who represents Christ. I am called to be an intercessor in the order of the Lamb. I am God's solution to destinies begging for restoration. I am God's plan for the desolations of many generations. Say, I will not fail God. I am God's vision for nations buried in devastation. I am a kingdom executor. I am an intercessor with administrative authority. I am the enforcer of God's will on earth. I am God's answer to the questions around me. I am a co-laborer with God in rebuilding ancient ruins. I am a kingdom legislator. I am an intercessor with governmental authority. I legislate and set things in place on behalf of God. I am a repairer of broken walls, a restorer of ancient ruins. I am commissioned to build up God's kingdom. The enemy will no longer enjoy open access to kill and devour. I arise as God's sentinel over my territory. Say, I am commissioned to build up God's kingdom. God depends on me to get things done here. I arise as a sentinel over my territory. Open your mouth and say, Lord, let your spirit of fire, let the spirit of prayer rest on me. Let the spirit of the watchman rest on me. Let the spirit of that intercessor rest on me. Let the understanding I need to operate in this dimension, let it be given to me. Say, Lord, let the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you rest upon me. I arise today as a sentinel over my family. I arise as a sentinel over my territory. The enemy will no longer enjoy open access to devour. The enemy will no longer enjoy open access to kill. I arise as a watchman over my sphere. God depends on me to get things done here. I answer the call to intercede. I answer the call to partake, to partake.
partner with God. I am a partaker of his divine nature. I am not weak. I am strong. I am not feeble. Life lives in me. Christ lives in me. It is not I that lives. It is Christ that lives and breathes through me. So this life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God. Christ prays through me. Christ thinks through me. Christ governs through me. Christ rules through me. I hit the soul to intercede. I arise as a sentinel over my nation. In the name of Jesus. Kaya Bosra. 